Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. And today we are reading The Puppy Place Where Every Puppy Finds a Home. And we are reading Mikey. And so guys, let's get started and guys, don't forget to click that like bu like button with a hammer or smash it. And guys, let's get started with chapter 1. And also smash that like button and subscribe button if you don't, yeah, never come back. <laughs> okay, chapter one. Did he hear the timer? Miss Holly, chapter one. Did I hear the timer? Miss Holly cupped a hand to her ear here. I think Team Yummy's cupcakes might be done. Let's check. Charles jumped up to follow Miss Holly to the oven. He and the rest of his team, Kendra, Olivia, and Lewis, clustered around Miss Holly as she pulled on an oven mint, 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 opened the door, slid out the rack, and poked a toothpick into one of the cupcakes. Charles' mouth watered. As a sweet chocolatey aroma wa wafted through the air, he could hardly wait for a taste. Miss Holly pulled out the toothpick and held it up so everyone could see. What do you think? She asked. They're done, said Olivia, jumping up and down. Charles Toad could tell that she was eager to taste the cupcakes too, but he also noticed that the toothpick was covered with brown goo. Charles shook his head. Not done, he said, remembering something Miss Holly had mentioned earlier that day. The toothpick has come out clean. Has to come out clean. Very good, Charles. Charles said Miss Holly as she slid the rack back in and shut the oven door. I see that you've been paying attention. We'll give them just three more minutes. She beamed at him and Char three more minutes. She beamed at him and Charles felt himself blushing. He didn't want to be the teacher's to be a teacher's pet, but he liked it when Miss Holly told him he'd done a good job. Cooking lessons were so much fun. Charles was glad he had begged Mom to sign him up as soon as he saw the poster at the Littleton Community Center. He had been totally into cooking for a while now, and he wanted to learn more. Today was Cupcake Day in cooking class. This was Charles' third lesson with Miss Holly. She was the best teacher ever. She made everything so much fun. Even when they were just learning about how to carry a knife when you are move when you were moving around the kitchen, point it downward and don't run. How to clean up as you cooked always cooked cooked always keep your area tidy or the correct way to wash your hands before before you started anything, any cooking at all. Sing a whole verse of row, row, row your boat while you scrub with soap and water. Even though Charles was one of the youngest kids in class, Miss Holly made him feel like a grown-up. Grown-up. She usually gave a few instructions at the beginning of cla each class, each lesson, and then the teams w were on their own. Miss Holly was always reminding them that it was okay to make mistakes too. It didn't turn out the way you expected, she'd ask. Well, what do you think you might do differently next time? On the first sat Saturday, 
they had learned how to make spaghetti and meatballs and a cassar salad. On the second Saturday, they had made homemade pizza with all kinds of crazy toppings. Charles' team had put grapes and bologna on theirs, which was expect ex unexpectedly delicious. And this week, they were doing cupcakes. Each week, Miss Holly divided up the class into three teams. And every time the teams were different, Charles liked everyone in the class. But today's team was the best. Olivia was really creative. Kentra was funny. And, and for some reason, Lewis loved washing pots and pans which was perfect since Charles did not. When Miss Holly had told them that they could make up any flavor combinations they wanted for their cupcakes, Kendra was the one who'd come up with the perfect idea, chocolate cupcakes with pink peppermint frosting, she'd said, and we could decorate the top with crushed up peppermint candy. Charles had added he'd seen something like that on the baking show he and Dad had been watching lately. Late, late, watching lately. The best part of cooking class was the end when they got to eat everything they made, but not until Miss, after Miss Holly had tasted all their creations and declared one team that the winner for the day so far. Charles had not been on a winning team, but he had a feeling that today might be it. He watched through the oven window, counting the seconds again. It was time to check the cupcakes again. How's Buddy? Miss Holly asked as they waited. He's great, said Charles. Miss Holly always asked about Buddy, Charles' sweet brown puppy. She'd learned about him on the first day of class. When they had played a, a getting to know you game, Charles had told everyone how his family fostered puppies, taking care of dogs who needed their help just until they could find one the perfect home. It was never easy to give up the puppies. When the time came, and with Buddy, it had been pretty much impossible. The whole family had fallen in love with him. Buddy the Petersons, Buddy Charles had told the class, was the only puppy the Petersons had ever decided to keep. Oh, Miss Holly said, when Charles talked about how cute Buddy was, with his soft brown fur and a, the white spot on his chest that was shaped like a heart. I love dogs, but I'm allergic. You're so lucky. Charles knew he was lucky. Being a foster family was the best thing that had ever happened and getting to keep Buddy was the icing on the cake, like peppermint icing. Kendra had mixed up mixed up a bowl full of the stuff while they ma waited for their clean spoon into the um mix up a bowl full of the stuff while they waited for their cupcakes to finish baking. Now Charles poked a clean spoon into the bowl as he could taste the beautiful pink frosting. The flavor was sparkly and sweet. Wow, he said, it's delicious. When the cupcakes were finally done, Miss Holly helped pull them out of the oven. Charles and Lewis popped them out on of the tins, set them on a rack to cool. After a few minutes, Olivia spread a thick layer of pink frosting on each one. Then... Kendra sprinkled flakes of crushed peppermint candy on over the tops 
and their creation was ready. Just in time for the fudge the judging, they cleans up their workstation while Miss Holly walks around the room looking over the finished cupcakes. When the when she tastes a team yummy's entry, Miss Holly closed her eyes and pretended to faint. Whoa, she said, "You guys really outdid yourselves. The flavor combination." The beautiful pink look, the candy sprinkles, the whole concept, it's a home run. Today's winner is definitely Team Yummy. Charles and his teammates jumped up and down, giving each other high fives. Yes, yelled Louis, Team Yummy rules. Charles knew their cupcakes were the best, but he tasted all the other team's cupcakes just to be sure. The rainbow ones that Team Scrumptious made looked really cool, but the flavor wasn't very exciting. He liked the butterscotch frosting on Team's Tasty cupcakes, but it didn't exactly go to go with the strawberry strawberry flavored cake part. He had to agree with Miss Holly. It was Team Yummy for the win. Charles was buzzing as he ran out to meet Mom, who had come to pick him up. Miss Holly followed the class outside to make sure everyone had a ride home. She waved at some other moms and called out a greeting to one of the dads. Then she peered into the Peterson's van. Wait a minute. She said, that's not Buddy. Chapter 2. Charles frowns, not Buddy. What did Miss Holly mean? Of course it was Buddy. The little brown pup loved, ride, loved to ride along with Mom or Dad. Was picking someone up. Just out doing air raids. Charles ran to the van and tugged on the sliding door. Hold on there, cowboy. Mom called out the window. The door is locked. I don't want Mikey to escape. Mikey? Now Charles was really confused. Who was Mikey? He stood on his tiptoes, cupped his hands around his face, and peered into the van. Rear window. There, sitting in Buddy's usual spot in the back seat was something small, white, and fluffy. It looked like a stuffy, the kind of stuffed animals, mostly dogs, that Lizzie collected. Then the fluffy thing twitched its ears, turned its head, and sniffed at the air for a moment, just long enough for Charles to be convinced. It wasn't a stuffy, it was a real live puppy. Charles ran around to the driver's side of the van and knocked on Mom's window. Who was Mikey? He demanded. Where did she come from? Are we fostering her? Can I get in and hold her? Mom put her window down and reached out to pat Charles, Charles' shoulder. I'll tell you and all about on the way home, she said. Let me grab Mikey's leash before you get in. Maybe I could hold her just for a minute, asked Miss Holly, who was still looking into the van. I'm allergic to dogs. They make me sneeze and my eyes itch like crazy. But she's so cute. It's worth it just this once. Mom laughed. She's, She is pretty adorable, she admitted. But I have a feeling she's going to be a bit of a handful. So we are fostering her, yelled Charles. He started to jump up and down. The other kids who had got, hadn't got gotten into their parents' cars yet ran over and started to cluster around trying to peek into the van's windows. What is it? asked Kendra. It's a toy. Is it a toy? Wait, it's moving, shouted Lewis. Maybe it's a robot. Everyone, please calm down, Mom said from the inside the van. She, 
the van, inside the van, she climbs into the back seat and clipped the leash on to the puppy's collar. Then she slid the back door open. It's a real live puppy. And if you want to meet her, you're going to have to use your indoor voice voices. And no sudden movement. We don't really even know this puppy, so let's be careful. She climbs out of the van holding the little white pup puppy in her arms. Oh everyone sighed at once. Is she for real? shouted a girl named Caitlin. I mean, she looks just a little shh. Olivia shushed her finger over her lips. Indoor voices, remember? Charles saw Mom and Miss Holly smile at each other. She whispered just for a second. Mom handed over the puppy. Charles watched as the fluffy puppy nestled herself into Miss Holly's arms. Charles had been around a lot of puppies. 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 But there was no question. This had to be the cutest puppy he had ever seen. She had floppy little ears and an adorable tiny black nose. Nose. Her eyes were black and shiny and her tongue. When she stuck it out to lick Miss Holly's face was as pink as an apple blossom. In springtime, her coat looked like looked so soft and fluffy like the part of a dandelion that you blow into the wind for good luck. Her name is Mikey, Mom said. Her owners had to give her up because they're moving across the country to an apartment building that doesn't allow dogs. She put a hand on Charles' shoulder. I just picked Mikey up. From your Aunt Amanda's doggy daycare. She's a regular there. Amanda says the owners are completely heartbroken. She pro promised them that we would take good care of Mikey and, fi fi and find her a very special home. Such a cute name for such a cute dog, said Charles, who waited said Miss Holly said Miss Holly she buried her nose in the the dog's neck Charles waited for her to start sneezing but she just closed her eyes and took in a long deep breath ah that puppy smell she said even better than chocolate cupcakes then she opened her eyes Okay, I better give her back before my allergies kick in. She handed the little pup back to mom. Her owners told Amanda that the name Mikey means beautiful in Japanese. Mom said she held Mikey carefully as she looked around at the crowd that had gathered. Oh, gathered. Okay, kiddos. You can each have a moment with her. Just give me, just give Mikey a gentle pat. And remember to move slowly and carefully so you don't scare her. One by one, each of the kids went up to Mikey and touched her gently. Kendra almost looked like she was going to cry. I just can't believe how cute she is. She said after she had her turn, she squeezed her hands together and sighed. I have never seen a real live dog who looked like that. I'm going to ask my mom if we can have another dog, said Olivia. We only have three and this one is really small. The other dogs would all love her. What kind of dog is she? asked one of the moms. One had also gotten in the line to take a turn petting Mikey. She is a bitch and fries, according to her owners, said Charles' mom. She prints prawn. She, um, 
Um, she, uh, I'm just going to start over. What kind of dog is she? Asked one of the moms who had also gone, gotten in the line to take a turn petting Mikey. She is a bitch and fries. According to her, to her owners, said Charles' mom, she pronounced it, it like bish ch bish bishon freeze kind of a fancy breed very expensive to buy from what i understand charles hated to think about people buying and selling dogs when there were so many dogs out there who needed homes she's quite calm she said said miss holly not like some little dogs, the kind that are always running around and yapping. I think that's because she was playing all day with all the other dogs at doggy daycare. Daycare, Mom told her, Amanda says she's usually a real live wire. She loves attention and can't get enough. I guess... Her owners taught her all kinds of tricks. Like what? Charles asked. Mom shrugged. I didn't have a chance to ask. She said, I suppose we'll find out soon enough. Mikey began to wriggle in Mom's arms, struggling to get out, get down. Okay, okay, said Mom. She bent over and set Mikey on the pavement. The little dog shook herself all over so that her fluffy white fur stood up. She looked around at the crowd surrounding her, co surrounding her, cocking her head. You want to see a trick? I'll show you a trick. Then she stood up on her hind legs and began to prance around in a circle, holding her tiny paws in front of her. Everybody gasped and began to cheer, like his black eyes sparkled with the fun of it. Of with the fun of it all as she danced spinning around and around spinning around and around chapter three charles ran home holding mikey on his lap she was light as a feather as a feather she was light as a feather and so warm and so soft he couldn't stop kissing the top of her fluffy head. She's amazing, Mom, he said. Did you ever see a dog dance like that before? 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 Up on her hind legs, Mom shook her head, smiling into the review mirror. Mirror, she's special, all right, she said. She said. She said. Um. She said. She said. She said, and I think, I think she knows it, too. She's used to getting a lot of attention according to amanda well she deserves it said charles nuzzling the little dog don't you love the way her hair puffs out all around her head that's because she's been getting very fancy grooming at isabella's you know that expensive pet salon mom said that's the kind of thing that worries me. Amanda promised me that this pup isn't spoiled, but it's pretty obvious that she has been pampered. Charles had a feeling Mom was remembering Princess, a very cute Yorkie puppy that the Petersons had once fostered. Princess had been very, very spoiled. And she had not been easy to take care of. Not only did she eat special food, but she had her own special dishes. Charles laughed. 
You're thinking of Princess, aren't you? I don't think Mikey's liking like that, he said. She can't help it, help it, that she's so adorable, or that she knows tricks, or that she's had fancy haircuts. He already felt protective of, of Mikey, if it's not like her owners gave us a long list about her care like Princess did. Mom nodded. That's true, she said. I'll I'll keep an open mind. Let's start by seeing how she gets along with other dogs. She pulled into the Peterson's driveway, take her out in the backyard, and I'll let Buddy out to meet her. Charles got out of the van, holding Mikey carefully. She was so tiny. He was afraid he might hurt her, but the second he had put her down on the lawn in the Peterson's fenced backyard, she began to tear around just like any other puppy. She was longer than she she was tall, but her short little legs were amazingly fast. In a second, she dashed past the swing set around the rose bushes and back to Charles. She spun around on her legs for a moment, grinning at him like a fluffy little white rocket. Charles heard laughter and turned to see Lizzie at the back door. They call they called that the bit bitchin blitz, she said. I've heard about it. But I've never seen it. Charles blinked. How did Lizzie do it? She'd seen the puppy for two seconds. And not only did she already guess Mikey's breed, she she even knew some weird fact about the Bridgeton, Bridgeton Fries dogs. His sister was like a walking encyclopedia of dog information. Let's see that what Buddy thinks, Lizzie said, stepping aside to let the b- little brown puppy out. Buddy walked to the top of the porch stairs and paused there for a moment, for a moment, watching Mikey tear around the yard. Then he flew down the stairs to join her. Buddy loved to chase and be chased. The faster the better. She's so cute, Lizzie said when Mom told me she was bringing home a fluffy little puppy. I wondered if she'd be spoiled or rotten, but Mikey acts just like a regular dog. Well, not exactly, said Charles. Wait until you see what she can do. He waited until the next time Mikey paused nearby. Mikey danced for us, he said, waving his hands. He didn't know if the command had and had if the command and hand signal signal would work, but Mikey seemed to understand what he wanted right away. She stood up on her hind legs and spun around in circles. Her tiny pink tongue stuck out as she panted, and her eyes were bright. Lizzie laughed and clapped her hands. That's right. Now I remember something else about this breed, she said. I think they're from Italy, and they used to work with street performers doing something just like that, maybe dancing while somebody sang or played music. Mikey finished her dancing and grinned up at Charles and Lizzie, with her head tilted at the most adorable angle possible. Her tiny tail wagged as fast as a hummingbird's wings. What should I do next? Let's see 
what other tricks she knows, said Lizzie. Mikey sat, Mikey sat. She gazed up at Lizzie, her head tilted. Um, that was kind of easy. How about asking me to do something a little more challenging? Shake, Mikey. And Charles, said Charles, Mikey reached out one paw and rested it for just a second on Charles' outstretched hands. Then she sat up on her haunches and held out up a paw for a high five. Which, which, without even being asked. After that, she offered the other paw. Then went for low fives. With each paw, Charles and Lizzie cracked up. She liked three steps ahead of us, ahead of us, said Lizzie. She's, she's amazing, said Charles. She's like a superstar. Buddy sat watching when Charles looked at him, looked at him. He held a paw up at his paw, looking at Charles with a wistful expression. Oh, Buddy said so Charles, shaking his puppy's paw. Don't be jealous. You're smart, too. You know lots of tricks. Charles and Lizzie spent the rest of the afternoon in the backyard playing with the puppies. Buddy got tired after a while and went to lie down by the back door. But Mikey just kept going and going. If Charles and Lizzie talked about something else for a moment, she reminded them with another trick. How about this or this? She see what I can do. She sat up pretty. She rolled over. She crashed her tail one way. She chased her tail one way and then chased it the other way. She did her dance again and again, spinning around in circles with her fluffy white fur spun out too. Mikey jumped up into Charles' arms when he held them out, and she leapt through a hoop that Lizzie made with her arms. She reminds me of Sweetie, said, said Lizzie. After one of Mikey's jumps, I know, said Charles, thinking of Sweetie, sweet little miniature poodle. Their family had once fostered. Sweetie had also been really good at tricks. Tricks. And Charles and his friends had made her the star of the circus they put on for friends and family. Sweetie was a, was a charmer, and the Petersons had found out, found her the perfect forever home. Charles was sure. They could do the same for Mikey. Chapter 4, guys. So, that is for that is it for now. And, guys, don't forget to smash that like button. And subscribe button. And, guys, I hope you have a good rest. A good rest of your day. Bye.